Well, hey, everybody. Um, despite there not really being anything controversial about this channel, I seem to have generated some controversy uh, with one of my latest videos. Um, and it was on a Ethernet-based solution that we use to extend Ethernet um, further than you normally can with just typical Ethernet cables. Um, in our case, the, it's the solution we use to move um, our presentations from our computers to our screens, which are in the very, very front of the room um, and far beyond the normal 50 foot to 75 foot range you can get out of a typical HDMI cable. So for years now, I have actually used an ethernet based solution that I showed you in that video. Several of you though, commented on that video in the multiple places that I posted that there's another way to do it that is actually preferable now. And that's with one of these. This is a 200 foot long ethernet or HDMI. <laughs> This is a 200 foot long HDMI cable um, that I think I said that video really shouldn't exist, um, but it does and apparently it works. Um, and the reason that it works is while your typical HDMI cable um, is uh, has the two ends on it you're familiar with and then the, the cable in between, that, that, that cable in between is full of copper wires. And that's where the problem comes in with going too long um, is that you lose a lot of signal going down those copper wires um, and it just can't get to the end. This guy, as you might be able to read um, on its uh, label here, replaces those, those copper wires with uh, fiber optic cables. And it actually, so the whole length, uh, the signal goes down this whole 200 foot length on fiber optic cables, uh, which are capable of transmitting things from much farther distances uh, without losing signal. Um, and so in the ends of each, uh, on each end of the cable is actually a converter that's gonna convert uh, the copper signal that it's gonna get from it, the device into a fiber optic signal and then decode it again at the other end. Now, why do these exist? Well, they exist for the same reason the ethernet based solution exists, because sometimes you need to put cables longer distances. Specifically, the fiber optic HDMI cable uh, technology was designed actually several years ago um, for the large digital sign industry. Uh, those huge signs that you see um, on like scoreboards um, or like down in Times Square or all those sorts of things, uh, those are huge digital um, screens that are not one big screen. They're actually made up of several smaller panels and you have to get signal to all of those smaller panels. But some of those screens are huge, literally hundreds of feet long. So you need really long cable to get it there. It would be a pain to use the ethernet based solution that I showed you where you have to have electricity um, plugged into the little boxes um, and all of that. Uh, it would be easier if the cable could just, if there was a cable that could just do it itself that didn't require all that external input. So enter the fiber optic cable. Um, now, what I want to do um, for you today is I've actually kind of reset up in front of me uh, the solution that I proposed before with my 200 foot uh, Ethernet run. Um, and for an apples to apples comparison, I'm going to take the same signal from the same camera and I'm going to run down this 200 foot Ethernet run to this same screen. And we're going to see if we notice any difference in quality or if it just works, which is what the comments tell me should happen. So let's check that out now. All right, well, let me show you what I got. We're gonna start off uh, with really the best camera uh, I currently have, which is my Honey Optics uh, 4K. It's got the largest image sensor, uh, it has some really great color quality to it. Um, so this is gonna be our starting point. Uh, we've got the HDMI coming out of that. Um, this is all being done in 1080p because that's what we run here for everything and that's what most people run for everything. Um, so we've got the signal coming um, out of that into an HDMI splitter um, and then that HDMI splitter is powered, so it's providing plenty of oomph um, to its two output channels. But what that means is we've got a digital signal coming out of the camera, we've got it going to our splitter box, which is then splitting it digitally. So both of these cables are being fed uh, with the exact same signal. And I off camera, I did some testing where I switched back and forth uh, between the different inputs on the cable and the different inputs on the TV to see if that made any difference, and it did not. Big surprise, because it's digital. So one, 
uh, output is going uh, down the line and through this 200 feet of fiber optic HDMI cable and then going back um, into the TV, uh, actually into input two. Uh, the other one is coming out to the short little run of HDMI uh, and then through the converter box to our uh, 200 uh, feet of network cable, CAT6, um, back to the receiver box, um, and then a short run of HDMI into the computer or into the TV, um, into input one, which is what we are seeing now. Um, so input one is what I would expect it to be. It's a pretty um, nice um, representation of our standard color test chart uh, and shows uh, that we are getting a good quality um, signal um, from our uh, ethernet solution. Now, if we turn over to HDMI input two, uh, we're gonna swap over uh, to now the fiber-based ethernet. I also tried this a couple of different ways. Um, it also came with um, this little guy here, um, which is uh, a pass-through HDMI uh, and then a USB. If for some reason uh, your HDMI output doesn't provide power, uh, you can use this to basically inject power into the system. Um, if it does provide power, you don't need this. I didn't need this and it didn't make any difference um, if I use this or didn't use this um, on the source side. All right, so here we go. What I can tell you anecdotally um, is the image quality that we're getting from the fiber-based uh, HDMI cable, quite frankly, isn't as good. Um, and I was actually surprised by that. It's a little more washed out. Um, I think it's actually a little bit fuzzier. Um, uh, the colors um, aren't as bright as sharp um, as they are over uh, the ethernet-based solution uh, that uh, I, showed in my previous video. So as you can see here, this is the fiber ethernet. Um, and then this is, no, that's the fiber HDMI. Um, this is the ethernet solution. So what I'm gonna do uh, is actually uh, capture um, some footage uh, for directly from the two HDMI outputs um, directly. So you're not looking at a, <laughs> a picture of a picture, which is a little hard to tell. Um, I'm gonna capture some inputs uh, from both of these um, and play them for you so that you yourself can kind of see the difference between the two. Is it monumentally different? No. One, it definitely works. The fiber ethernet works and it's way simpler to install, uh, but does come with at least this one drawback. So after setting both of these systems up, when would I use what? Well, um, both are gonna perform uh, fairly similarly in terms of resolution and things like that. Uh, the uh, Ethernet solution um, is handy for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that Ethernet cable is actually pretty thin. Um, and if you wanna buy bulk cable that doesn't have ends on it and then put the ends on yourself, uh, that means you only have to drill very tiny holes uh, to run this cable wherever it is you need to run it to um, because you can run it without the ends on it and just add the ends later. That's gonna give you a lot more flexibility. Um, and if you've gotta do something funky through a seal um, or something like that or gets you some really tight spaces, it's really nice to have a nice thin cable to do that. You can't do that with the HDMI because you need those factory ends on there. You can't splice it, you can't do anything. It is what it is as it comes. So if you're gonna go with the HDMI, make sure you've got enough room um, to get that whole um, one end of the cable through. Because while the cable itself really isn't any thicker um, than, the HD, than the ethernet cable, um, the ends are definitely good sized. Um, so there might be some installation reasons to go with an ethernet based solution rather than the HDMI based solution. Um, it, that really is going to depend on you. Um, benefits of the HDMI is of course it's simple. That you are not dealing with boxes, you're not dealing with encoders or decoders, um, you're not having to get electricity um, you know, and, and power to um, both ends uh, and it just plugs in and works the way that you would expect it to. So if that is um, important to you, then um, by all means, you know, go with the um, HDMI. I think at this point, um, it's really a matter of preference um, on your installation um, and then probably a little bit of preference on how important um, that image quality difference is to you. Again, I suspect uh, that that difference isn't going to be as big on say a 50 foot or 100 foot fiber-based HDMI. But 
I want to thank everyone who commented and told me um, about this product. Somehow I missed it. Um, and certainly I don't want any controversies on this uh, amazing, fun little channel where we talk about really cool live streamy stuff, which is the thing that I love and care about so deeply. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this or any other topics you'd like to see me cover, um, we've covered a lot of the stuff that I care about. And right now I'm trying to produce um, videos based on what it is that you all care about. So please feel free um, to, to give me some comments or some questions um, things you wouldn't mind me looking into. Um, I've got some more reviews coming up um, soon that I'm excited about. Uh, and yeah, so thank you for joining me um, in this one. And until we see each other again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions and the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.